keep playing. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen and bright and clean was given to her to wear. And then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. These are the true words of God. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Please be seated. Emily and John have called you to assemble here today so that before God in the presence of you, friends and family, they might publicly declare their love for each other and their choice of each other as lifelong mates. Further, they wish to exchange vows of mutual commitment to the fulfillment of married life together. On their behalf, may I tell you how honored they feel to count you as family and friends, and those who are streaming in as well, and those who are watching it later on today. Good that you were able to join in. They're very pleased, despite everything, that they would be able to uh, have you share with, these, with them in these sacred moments that they're about to embark upon. Scripture reading. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Emily Ruth Crawley and John Thomas Spur. By your presence here, you are already making public your intention to marry, and we were waiting quite a while. 
so we're aware. <laughs> so that your integrity of presence may be clear to those of us present, would you respond to these questions? John, do you take Emily to be your wife, to live together according to God's plan for marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, remain faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I do. And Emily, do you take John to be your husband, to live together according to God's plan for marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, remain faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Um, Usually at this time I have something special to say. I do. Um, it has been, um, well, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we, we might not be standing here or thinking about this, but things have changed. And uh, we were also thinking today that usually when you have a, a wedding, two people come together and at the end of it they hardly remember anything at all because they were you know just getting there nervous planning and everything but you will never forget today <laughs> and you'll never forget the conditions this was the year 2020 when everything was supposed to come into focus and i think it will it's just what an uh, what a, an off balance start but we are so overjoyed that you have found each other that you are embarking on this journey together. And the, the message or the, the words from the writer of Ecclesiastes is uh, uh, it, it, just this description of the two of you coming together, not just for life, but also it's a picture of two people who will be a support to each other for years to come, and especially right now. And so... Um, one thing that I want to say is that uh, the two of you, I, I've only known Emily for about uh, six months, and John a lot longer. And uh, the interesting thing is that Emily's dad, Art, and I were in seminary together 100 years ago, <laughs> and uh, we were really good friends. We used to go to Tim Hortons and all this and I feel like there's something about the two of you coming together that, for which I have an, inv an investment, uh, knowing some of your heritage, knowing you, John, the longing that you both have to complete each other. And of course, with your connection with God in your life, um, as we've sat and talked to you, we've said this and we think it's important that if you can talk to each other and also have time to spend praying together, we're praying for each other in hard times, good times, that that's a way of inviting God into to your relationship. And so that's what I want to say, because the next verse in Ecclesiastes says, uh, and, 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 and not only two together are strong, but a cord of three is even stronger. And of course, God in your life is the third strand within that cord. Um, be short. Let's just bow our heads right now as we pray a blessing upon Emily and John as they prepare to uh, exchange their vows. Father, in the next few moments in the lives of this couple before us, life-changing effects will be upon them, choices that they will make part of the unknown that lies ahead of them. Well, they're just about ready to register their, their commitment to each other before you and before us. So we ask you, Lord, to be with them in the words that they say and that the words they exchange would be a proclamation and a declaration that would continue throughout their life. We ask your presence and your blessing upon them and their vows in the name of Jesus, amen. Hmm. You're going to put your flowers right
right there. Yeah. Now you're going to face each other and hold hands. Um, you'll notice that. Um, the, do you have a little bulletin or a little order? Do you have that? You do. Good. Do you notice that it says in there, that, uh, Emily's bridesmaids, who would have been right here, and his groomsmen, uh, they're not present. And we just thought of that just now when she, Emily didn't have someone to, to turn and give the flowers to. But as they are exchanging vows, and those of you who are watching, um, they're really... Sad that you can't be here, but they love you very, very much and wish you were. Is that okay I said that? Yeah. Good. Okay. <clears throat> As an expression of your willingness to engage upon these obligations and the seal of the holy vows you are about to make, John, will you repeat after me? I, John, take you, Emily. I, John, take you, Emily. To be my wife. Be my wife, my partner in life, my partner in life, and my one true love. And my one true love. I will cherish our friendship. I will cherish our friendship. And love you today, tomorrow, and forever. And love you today, tomorrow, and forever. I will trust you and honor you. I will trust you and honor you. I will laugh with you and cry with you. I will laugh with you and cry with you. I will love you faithfully. I will love you faithfully. Through the best and through the worst. Through the difficult and the easy. The difficult and through the easy. Through what may come, I will always be there. Through what may come, I will always be there. As I have given you my hands to hold. As I given you my hands to hold. So I give you my life to keep. And I give you my life to keep. So help me God. So help me God. And Emily, will you repeat after me? I, Emily, take you, John. I, Emily, take you, John. To be my husband. To be my husband. My partner in life and my one true love. My partner in life and my one true love. I will cherish our friendship. I will cherish our friendship. And love you today, tomorrow, and forever. And will love you today, tomorrow, and forever. I will trust you and honor you. I will trust you and honor you. I will laugh with you and cry with you. I will laugh with you and cry with you. I will love you faithfully. Through the best and the worst. Through the best and the worst. Through the difficult and easy. Through the difficult and easy. Through what may come, I will always be there. Through what may come, I will always be there. As I have given you my hands to hold. As I have given you my hands to hold. So I give you my life to keep. So I give you my life to keep. So help me God. We're standing right over a big grate here, and we're just commenting. We want to make sure we protect the rings from That would be great. From the earliest of times, the golden circle has been a symbol of wedded love, wedded union. It's made of pure gold to symbolize purity. And of course, as an unbroken circle, it also symbolizes perpetual love, the commitment to not give up. As you um, exchange the rings right now, uh, John, you repeat after me and place the ring on Emily's left hand. <clears throat> Emily, I give you this ring. Emily, I give you this ring. As a symbol of our vows. As a symbol of our vows. And with all that I am, with all that I am, all that I have, all that I have, I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. And Emily, likewise, will you place this ring on John's left hand? On his finger. Okay, repeat after me. John, I give you this ring. John, I give you this ring. As a symbol of our vows. As a symbol of our vows. With all that I am. With all that I am. 
And all that I have, and all that I, have I, honor I honor you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. For as much as you, John Thomas Burr, and you, Emily Ruth Crawley, have made these solemn, the solemn covenant of marriage before God, before this company of family and friends, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I now declare you are husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Good. Good. <clears throat> Actually, no, I'm going to pray first. Yeah.